In this video, I am sharing with you my personal 10 favorite places to eat in St. Martin. What's up and welcome or welcome back. Whether you've been on my channel before or this is your first time, I am very grateful that you're here. Thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Rizal, the Traveling Island Girl on social media. And in this video, like I said in the introduction, we are going to talk about my 10 favorite places to eat on a Dutch side, St. Martin. Yes, that's right. We have so many, so many restaurants that it's very, very hard to make one complete list of places that I like to chow down at uh, on both sides of the island. So I've decided to split it down. So in this video, we're going to discuss my 10 favorite places on Dutch St. Martin. And in a little while, we're going to have a part due to this video. So stay tuned for that. And then we're going to talk about my 10 favorite places on French side St. Martin. But before we dive right in, I just want to remind you to please keep supporting this channel by just hitting that subscribe button, hitting that like and share button and that bell if you want to get notified of whenever I post a new video. Your support means the world to me and I am eternally grateful for each one of you that click that subscribe button every week. Because after all, your support is what makes it possible for me to keep coming back every week with more Caribbean travel information, Caribbean vibes, and of course, that alluring island lifestyle. To continue with this topic on everybody's mind, our favorite F word in the world, food, let me first remind you of a couple of things. First of all, St. Martin is known as the friendly island, but that is not all that we are known for. We are also known as the gourmet capital of the Caribbean, and that probably has to do with the many, many restaurants that we have here on both Dutch and French side, St. Martin. There is seriously a place that you can eat at every day for a couple of months without hitting that same place twice. Believe me, it is. we are so very proud of all the restaurants that we have on such a tiny little island of only 37 square miles. So let's just dive right in because you are not here to hear me just talk about the you know island in general. You are here to hear about my 10 recommendations for places to chow down at on Dutch side St. Martin. So let's hit it. Starting this list off with Avantika. Avantika is where you will probably find me if you are looking for Thai cuisine. It is my favorite Thai place on the island. It is located in the entertainment district of St. Martin called Simpson Bay. It's actually right on the Simpson Bay Strip and you can find it in the building called Plaza del Lago. It's actually on the second floor in the back. So what it lacks in view, it definitely makes up for that with really good food, a great ambiance and some trendy atmosphere. So definitely a place that you want to check out whether you are just looking for a great happy hour on Fridays because they have this whole lounge setting inside with a really big bar and of course also the dining area is quite trendy and if you're looking for more outside dining that's also uh, possible on their outside patio with bistro lights really really nice place so definitely head out to Avantika it's definitely a place worth seeing and experiencing so next on this list are my good friends Alejandra and Edward there at Balls and Wine. Balls and Wine is located in Paradise Mall it is in Kobe district technically, but it is not too far from the Simpson Bay stretch and you can find it there tucked away in the little corner. It's a cozy little place with fantastic tapas and wine. The name came from their first menu. Their first menu was of course all about balls and I'm talking here about meatballs and fish balls, cheese balls, you name it. And then of course the menu went expanding and kept expanding to now offering some of the best tapas on the island and of course some incredible cocktails and some really good wine. So definitely head out there, tell Edward that I sent you and let him treat you on things like the, the tuna pizza and the Three Stooges uh, taco trio, which is so good. You can find me at this restaurant pretty much like twice a month and that is on a bad month when I'm not going out much but definitely my, one of my favorite places to sit and just enjoy the vibe and the food. So you might want to take along some friends it is a great place where you can just share some appetizers some tapas and of course uh, take your pick on incredible cocktails. You might need a reservation especially if you're heading out there on days uh, like Taco Tuesday or on Wine Wednesday. 
So for our next restaurant, we're taking a little trip to Italy. Actually, no, we're heading right there to Falcon Key. Falcon Key is another area that is quite close by the Simpson Bay stretch. And we are heading to a place called Isola. Isola is one of my favorite Italian places to eat at on St. Martin. And there are many, there are quite a few Italian places here on the island. But Isola is the one that I tend to frequent the most. It is located right next door to Hollywood Casino there in Pelican Key. And it is very well known for its brick style oven pizzas but that is not all it's got a great atmosphere very nice service the manager is always on point and very very sweet and friendly but their other dishes are also to die for I've had the salmon there but one other thing that I had that is quite popular and that is always a really you know you gotta really catch it at the right time because it's not always available is the tartufo pasta and that is of course the black truffle pasta it's a dish of steaming pasta with shaved black truffle on top it is mwah, mama mia it is to die for so it's definitely something that you might want to try so add isola to your itinerary when on c martin so for the next restaurant on this list, we are headed a little deeper into Cove Bay. Cove Bay is located right across from the Simpson Bay Strip or from the Simpson Bay neighborhood, and it is right across the lagoon. You'll find there a small eclectic place called Lagoonies. Lagoonies is located at the Lagoon Marina there in Cove Bay, hence the name, I guess. And it is a very special place because it's a great hangout. It's got friendly service. The owner is such a doll, and the chef is a superstar in my books I don't know how she does it but their menu changes daily and she comes up with this creative stuff and there is always always at least one or two vegetarian or vegan dish on the menu so that makes me happy so definitely a place that you want to try out not only for lunch or dinner but also just to hang out it is especially known in the yachting and boating community but it is open to everyone and everybody is made to feel welcome there so whether you're or a visitor, a local, or just passing through, definitely make sure that Lagunis is on your list of restaurants to try when on St. Martin. It is um, right on the lagoon, so you'll be sitting right by the water, and they are known to have almost nightly entertainment. So there's live music going on at one point or another at this restaurant. Definitely a place to hang out at, drink a beer, or speaking of beers, by the way, ask them for their locally brewed beer selection. They have a great selection there that is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, only available at Lagoonies. So ask for the Lagoon beers, you won't regret it. So how about some sushi for our next selection? That's exactly what we're gonna have, and we're gonna have that at Alina. Now, Alina is a place that I myself only got to try for the first time very, very recently, and immediately added it to my top 10 favorite places to eat at. It is a place that has been here for quite a while. It's been uh, not too long, a couple of years, and it has made such an impression on me that it's definitely gonna be one of my favorites from now on. Alina is located in Maho, area another really great place for entertainment in Dutch St. Martin and it is located right upstairs from the Casino Royale so if you're familiar with the Maho area Casino Royale you can't miss it it's right there in the heart of Maho you'll just go through the casino climb up the stairs and you'll find Alina Alina is a very open type place and uh, all the way in the back it has that chef uh, bar I would say I don't know exactly what it's called shame on me <laughs> but chef Ken is amazing it was just wonderful seeing this man in action and seeing him chop up all of this stuff and making these beautiful creations not only beautiful for super delicious we had the pleasure of experiencing chef's choice which is you just sitting at a bar enjoying yourself and the food just keeps on coming dish after dish of deliciousness mouth-watering creations really is the only thing that I can come up with chef Ken like I said is amazing so definitely add Alina to your list and try out the chef's choice if not just check something from the menu everything on the menu is great I can guarantee you that and for when you're finally full and you just want to relax and just kind of like chill a little bit head on to the third level which is where you'll find mimosa rooftop bar alina just recently just last month december 
uh yeah we're now in january 2022 by the way so i don't know when you're watching this video but just last month in december 2021 is when chef ken opened the famous mimosa rooftop bar it is it has been famous from the time it opened and it's a great little place it's a rooftop bar like i said you can sit sit there and people watch there's a dj almost nightly and their creations when it comes to cocktails are just simply baffling i don't know where they come up with these things but the cocktails that we have tried on that night were delicious so add that to your list and make sure that it is a one of a one of those nights when you want to kind of like go out afterwards as well so you'll have dinner at alina and then take out the steps to the third floor to mimosa rooftop bar you will not be disappointed i guarantee you that so for our next restaurant on this list, I'm going to be a little shameless and I am going to promote my own husband's restaurant called Rusty Rocket. If you have been following me for a while on social media or right here on my YouTube channel, you have definitely heard me mention it before. And I'm not just mentioning it in this list because it is in my top 10. Uh, I also have to because otherwise you might want to divorce me or kick me out of the house. We don't know. But no, it's a known fact that Rusty Burger Saloon and Rum Saloon is known for having the best burgers on the island. This is a fact of life, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, my husband has done some amazing creations, creating a whole list of really, really good burgers. And don't expect the regular burgers here. Don't expect lettuce and tomato and that kind of stuff on your burger. These are special burgers. So just go with the flow when you get here don't expect anything that you've tried before and it just tried one or more of the burgers on the list there are burgers with creative names like rocky balboa apollo creed there's a tsunami burger which is my favorite and i always beg him whenever he's at a restaurant to please bring home a tsunami burger for me because it's so good it's a tuna burger with all sorts of rings and bells and it's fantastic it's known of course besides the burgers also known for its chicken wings it's mandingo dog and it is known for having really crafty cocktails it's a good it's a cool little place that we've created we had it before irma irma then did a number on it and then after irma we rebuilt the bar and made it into what it is today we have brought in pallets and uh wood uh, boxes wooden boxes and all sorts of like driftwood and stuff that we found after the hurricane and we kind of like we used all of that wood and made the rusty rocket that is known today so it is a great little spot just to hang out uh, I am not always there but I try to be there all the time so I you you know just come in and say hi and try one of the burgers you won't regret it so the next restaurant on this list is located in Phillipsburg. So let us take a drive over to Phillipsburg area because of course Phillipsburg has to be mentioned because Phillipsburg also has its sets of great restaurants to try out. And one of my favorites is definitely Sheikas. Sheikas is has become over the years a great friend by the way the owner is super sweet and she is a hard-working woman and she has built Sheikas from the ground up it is located right at the cultural center in back street there in phillipsburg so it's in the heart of downtown area and it is very popular for lunch and it has a, like a buffet she sets out this like buffet kind of uh space but it's got it always had a glass even before this whole covid pandemic it has glass in front of it and somebody will actually scoop the food out for you and then you can go to the eating area and then you can have your lunch there and you can also have some uh, freshly squeezed juices and other uh, options for drinks so definitely add Sheikas to your list and check her out for lunch she is usually not open for dinner but definitely for lunch so whenever you're going you're heading over to Phillipsburg and you have a shopping day planned or whatever make sure that you stop at Sheikas and tell her I said hi so for some more local dishes, TJ's Cassava Pot is my next recommendation. They're located in Sucker Garden. Sucker Garden is an area not too far from Phillipsburg. It's actually quite near downtown area. And there you'll find Jewel, Troy, and Sasha. It's a family-owned business, this TJ Cassava Coal Pot. And they are famous for their food. Yes, T Jewel actually has been cooking for years. Uh, she's a really, really great chef. And she has been doing this out of her kitchen from her own home. That is when I met her some 
quite some years ago and then now to opening to having her own restaurant and she totally deserves it it's a great little place for breakfast lunch or dinner you'll most definitely find me there around lunch because that is when i like to go or on a friday or sunday afternoon you know it's a great spot for a little rum or uh, rum based drink while you're waiting for your food and catching up with of course our friends there jewel and troy it's a good spot with good food great portions and friendly service so check out tj's cassava coal pot whenever you get a chance on sea margin so next on my list and we're getting quite near the end of this list and i cannot get to the end of this list without mentioning this next restaurant because it's so famous and well known that it will be a shame for me to exclude it from my most and my 10 favorite places to dine at and actually in fact now that i'm and I'm recording this I just thought I just had them for dinner yesterday it's called Emilio's Emilio's is located in an area called Dutch cul-de-sac and it is very famous uh, not only for the food but also its location it is in an old boiling house uh, on a plantation and it's named after the owner of said place Mr. Emilio so Emilio's is it, their tagline is dine with history and that is exactly what you'll be doing the owner Norman a personal friend and family member uh, you know ask for him if you see him walking around ask him about the history of Sir Martin he will not hesitate to tell you everything he knows and he is very well versed on the history of our island so definitely you know make some space make some time to have a little chat with him he and his wife Sue is who started this restaurant all the way in the beginning and uh, they have now hired chef Sydney who is doing an amazing job ask for the white chocolate mashed potatoes you will not regret this this is like so yummy everything on the menu is really good or head on over to the bar um, and ask for Daza Daza is the mixologist uh, at this restaurant and he creates amazing cocktails uh, they're also of course known for their wine and nobody knows about wine there better than Marianella Marianella is the daughter-in-law and she's a good friend as well so go to Emilio's especially if you have something to celebrate whether it's an anniversary graduation birthday whatever it is ask them also about the wine cellar where you can have a more private and intimate dinner setting uh, it's a it's amazing it's an amazing place you don't want to miss this believe me I have made an entire video about this restaurant and I am linking it down below in the description so check that out if you are interested in visiting Emilio's Emilio's there in Dutch cul-de-sac can't miss it last on this list but definitely Definitely not my least favorite restaurant is a place that I often go to for lunch and that is Freedom Fighters Eitel Shack. The Eitel Shack is located on the way to Phillipsburg so it is a place that you cannot miss. It's a quaint little place very colorful with colorful characters as well. My good friend Russ Bushman is the head of the or the owner of the restaurant and he does this with his wife and his son and so it's another family owned business that has created quite a buzz. If you you are looking for idle food which is what the ones who are in the Rastafarian beliefs um, eat mostly so it's organic vegan uh, nothing is preserved uh, nothing from cans nothing from bags everything is locally uh, produced and is from farmers all over the island and some of it or most of it most of the ingredients are grown right in the back of the restaurant up the hill and if you want to know more about this restaurant I have made a complete vlog about it you will I will link it down below in the description box as well so definitely check it out if you want to know more about Freedom Fighters Eitel Shack this little place was made very popular by the late Anthony Bourdain when he mentioned it in one of his shows and since then it has been everybody's favorite little shack to stop at it is really good for lunch but they're also open for um, breakfast so you can check them out for that as well uh, I love idol food idol food is vegan it's organic and it is very very healthy but healthy does not mean tasteless in this case and they are doing a phenomenal job of keeping my belly happy 
almost every day for lunch so check them out you will not that's another place that you will not regret take it from me otherwise it wouldn't have been on this list of my 10 favorite places to eat at and with that we have come unfortunately to the end of this video but i want to thank you so very much for sticking around with me till the end and i must ask which one of the 10 restaurants that i mentioned in this video are you most likely to try or try again maybe so let me know in the comment section below don't be shy also mention which one you have your heart set on whenever you visit the island and for those of you who are visiting for the first time I got great news I do have other services that might be interest of interest to you I'm gonna link my the link to my services down below as well I can imagine going to an island for the first time where you've never been to before you don't know what to do what to experience uh, where to go where to eat and that is where you have a friend in me so check out my services. I can definitely help you out, plan a uh, something more customized to your liking. I also offer, of course, island tours. I'm not always available, but you never know. So check that out as well. And with that, I must bid you adieu. And I must dash now to make the next video for you all, which is, of course, part two of this uh, you know, video of food places to try out on St. Martin. Next up, of course, is the video about Frank's Side St. Martin. I'm going to share with you my 10 favorite places to eat at over there and um, so I guess I'm better dash but before I do so thank you so very much for watching bye